Okay, the next type of dementia that I wanted to talk about is Parkinson's disease. Now, Parkinson's disease is a disease that is, is defined by its um, symptoms, signs and symptoms at presentation. So the first sign that we see with Parkinson's disease is a tremor at rest. Okay, so that's number one. Um, number two is rigidity. And you can see they have sort of this norm, this stooped posture and a very rigid spine. Um, but really they have rigidity of all the muscles in their body. So number two is rigidity. Um, number three is um, bradykinesia. And this sort of gives them, actually the rigidity together with the bradykinesia gives them this sort of slow, so let's see if I can write this, bradykinesia gives them the slow shuffling gait that you see with uh, patients with Alzheimer's um, disease. And um, and then just gait disturbances in general. So they're having trouble walking. Okay, so those are the four defining features of Parkinson's disease. Now, <clears throat> there are um, several different types of Parkinson's disease. There is primary um, and primary is usually caused by Lewy body dementia. And then there is secondary, and secondary could have whole, a whole lot of causes. Um, causes that we think of commonly are pugilistic, so patients that have been hit in the head a number of times, um, like Muhammad Ali. Uh, medications can cause um, can cause Parkinson's like uh, the uh, Parkinson's syndrome um, and brain lesions, particularly brain lesions in the midbrain. Okay, so remember Parkinson's disease is a syndrome that is made up of these four symptoms grouped together. Okay, so um, we are going to focus from now on primarily just with Parkinson's symptoms, the Parkinson's syndrome that is caused by Lewy body dementia. Okay. Now here we have a picture of the brain and in this picture you can see some important structures that have uh, that have a central role in the uh, development of Alzheimer's disease from Lewy body dementia. Now here you see the substantia nigra and the substantia nigra is a little area in the top of the midbrain that is um, darkly colored. And it's darkly colored because it has melanin pigments, pigmentation in it. Now really, if, you, um, if, a, if a pathologist um, takes a brain out of a, um, out of a cadaver and, um, and processes the brain in formaldehyde, you end up with three different types of tissue three different colors. You have gray matter, which is on the surface of the cortex. Then you have white matter that's below it, right? And then the only other color that you see is the substantia nigra, which is this tiny little strip of black or very dark colored tissue that is um, just at the top of the midbrain. And the substantia nigra has has two little areas within it um, that are called the red nuclei. And these little tiny red nuclei are responsible for producing dopamine. And they produce dopamine actually for only one part of the, one major important part of the brain, which is the basal ganglia. So it sends its dopamine supplies up here. Now, without these red nuclei cranking out dopamine, the basal ganglia does not have a ready supply of dopamine. Now, in the basal ganglia, dopamine ha acts as an inhibitory postsynaptic potential. Now, interestingly enough, the basal ganglia is the area that control that has significant control over motor function. Now, our bodies, um, our muscles are very twitchy, and if um, 
if we have no inhibition of our motor system, all of our muscles will be contracted all the time. Now you can see this in patients that have spinal injuries. If you have like a C2 transection of the spine, um, initially patients with a spinal injury um, will be flaccid, right? They'll have mo no muscle movement at all. But after um, a couple of weeks, they will become very rigid and they'll start to get contractures. And why is this? Because the muscles, um, the nervous system of the spine is still intact and the muscles are still intact and the spine is constantly sending out messages to the muscles to contract. The only reason that we don't get these messages, our muscles don't get this message all the time is because our, our spine the motor system in our, our spine is inhibited by the basal ganglia. Okay, so patients that have had a C2 transection are going to eventually become rigid all over and develop contractures and this becomes a major problem with people that have had um, high spinal uh, transections and that is because of the loss of inhibition of the motor system from the spine that is coming from the basal ganglia. Now, what inhibit what causes the um, basal ganglia to inhibit the motor the uh, contraction of muscles in the motor system? It is dopamine. All right. So what happens with um, Lewy body dementia is inside the little neurons of inside the red nucleus we start to develop um, a buildup of proteins and these proteins are called alpha synuclein and they build up and um, start to develop some filaments kind of similar to the tau proteins that we were talking about on Alzheimer's dementia and these destroy the dopamine producing neurons in the red nucleus and rob the basal ganglia of the dopamine that they need to inhibit the motor neuron system the motor the motor system now if we inhibit if we are no longer inhibiting the motor system the muscles are going to contract and relax you're going to develop a tremor the muscles that are contracting and not relaxing at all are going to be very rigid. Um, you're going to have bradykinesia and gait disturbances as a result of these two things. Okay, So this has to do with the loss of dopamine which serves as an inhibitory postsynaptic potential within the basal ganglia which can, um, controls the inhibition of the motor nervous system.